Okay, today we're going to be replacing the sink and the faucet. As you can see, there's a lot of corrosion in the sink. And uh, so we're just going to replace both the faucet and the bathroom sink. First thing you want to do is remove the P-trap. You want to get a bucket, set underneath, and maybe have a towel. Uh, you may have to use a wrench to loosen it, but as you can see, we can loosen it with our hands. And there will be water in the P-trap, so that's why you need the bucket. And sometimes you have to force it off a little bit. They've been on here for a long time. And there you have it. One thing that I failed to mention is you will want to turn the water off. You can either do it on these valves, and uh, the problem we had is these valves were tight, very hard to close. So what we did is we just turned the main water off, and uh, you want to do that before you start removing the the hose. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is remove, remove the drain stopper, and it's on the back side, and sometimes they're hard to get off. You just get your pliers and twist real hard, and in this case it just broke off, which is fine, because we're just going to remove it anyway. Now the next thing you want to do is remove this big nut. Just unscrew it. Once you get it down a little ways, you may have to... Okay, there we go. Once you get it loose, you can probably unscrew it by hand. Now you also need to get off the this wing nut. And you'll see there's the, there's the compression ring. So you just remove this all the way. Once you get that off, then you can go ahead and push the drain out. And to remove the drain stopper, you're going to have to undo this little bolt, loosen that up. That'll allow you to take the uh, drain stopper out. Once you loosen it up, you should be able to do it by hand. Then you can see you can remove and take the drain stopper out. Now the next thing you want to do is unscrew this pipe. You can just unscrew it and then you should be able to pull it on through once you get the top off. So you unscrew this top part and then it will, you can pull it and then you can just pull the, the pipe out. Before we remove the uh, sink, we want to make sure that we undo the, uh, the water lines. So we're going to do that right now. You, you probably want to do that before you even start to remove the sink so that it doesn't do anything to the water line. Now we've turned the water off, so you're just going to unscrew these compression bolts. Again, you'll probably want to use a rag or a bucket because it will drain some water once you, once you get the bolt off. Now you'll notice that these are uh, copper copper tubing you may have plastic or, but with the copper you've got to pop it out and as you can see we just pulled the uh, copper tubing out now if you're just rem removing the faucet um, you would have to unscrew these bolts if you're not removing the sink we're, we're removing the sink and the faucet so you could just take uh, these off and then you could remove the, the uh, faucet and then just replace that. We're putting in a whole new sink, so we don't need to do that. You have the other compression bolt. And we're just going to remove that. And again, once you get it off a little ways or get it loose, you can do it and remove it from with your hand. And then uh, again, once you remove the, the bolt, you need to lift up on that copper tubing and, and pull it out. Now, the next step to remove the sink is you've got to go around. This is an, it's basically an undermount. And so uh, we need to loosen all of these bolts and that will allow us to take the sink out. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And once you get them loose a little bit, they usually just pop right off, just like that. 
So you want to remove all of those. So so when you're re when you're undoing the these bolts, you need to make sure if it's an undermount that you have something supporting the sink. Otherwise, it might fall on you, and that would not be good. Now you can use, I'm just using pliers, but you can see they are screws, so you could just use a screwdriver, but these have been corroded, they've been on here for a long time. Now we're just going to finish removing the screws, and then we'll take the sink out. Done all those screws. You may need to pry it a little bit. Um, you can see I've done that a little bit. Up. Then you just you may have to you hit it with a hammer, but then you can just go ahead and remove the sink. And this will work with either we're going to replace the faucet or put the faucet on a new sink, so this will work with both of them. Before you put the new sink in, you want to clean all the uh, grout because it's caulking. Get it nice and clean. Wipe it off. I'm going to put on a Delta, it's called a Delta Foundations faucet. And you just go ahead and remove it from that. You want to put this on before you set the sink. Otherwise, you have to screw all these on underneath the sink, and that's not best. You'll see that there are some little end caps you need to take off and you just unscrew these wing nuts and it's pretty simple to put on you just set it the thing you need to make sure is that you you know you go ahead and screw these on and get them a little bit snug and then center your faucet And you, you never want to get them too tight, so we'll just get it a little bit snug so that we can center the faucet on the sink. Or the faucet is nice and centered on the sink. Uh, that looks pretty good. So I think we're good to go. Now we'll just go ahead and hand tighten. Just get that really nice and snug. And then just double check and make sure you're centered. The next thing, once we've cleared off the uh, the counter, we've got some cleaner and, and cleaned it off really well. We're going to put a bead of caulk around, uh, just get it kind of close, and just put a nice bead of caulking around the uh, around where the sink is going to lay. This will allow it to uh, secure it to the counter. And just make sure you get it all the way around so it's got a nice bead. Now once you've uh, put a nice bead of caulking on the counter, you go ahead and set your sink. And again, you want your sink to be, there we go, you want it to be nice and even. So you want to just make sure you get it nice and nice and even. And once you uh, do that, you're going to go ahead and, you know, get a cloth and uh, go ahead and wipe up the caulking kind of wipe it as you go and you want to make sure you get a nice bead you don't need to put a lot but just get enough and you, you can just take your finger and just smooth it up again so it's nice and smooth and then use a rag to clean it up what we do is we're going to hook up the water lines Just go ahead and hand tighten them, and it's very important that you do that. You hand tighten them so that you don't cross thread them. 
they should go on nice and easy. Hand tighten them as much as you can. Then you can get your uh, crescent wrench or your uh, any kind of a wrench will work. Channel locks. If you're installing the water lines, you want to make sure that you put the uh, cold water, which should go to the right side, and the uh, hot water line should go to the left side. And then you just go ahead and tighten them up. Just get them nice and snug. Don't, don't go too hard with it. You can always go back and tighten it a little bit more if you, if you don't want to over tighten it. So you'll tighten the bottom and then you're going to tighten the top. Uh, it's good to use a, 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 a crescent wrench so you don't have to sit and mess with it. We don't have one so we're just using the channel locks. Which makes it a little bit more difficult but again you'll just want to get it nice and snug. So yeah just get, go ahead and get it nice and snug. And I think we're good to go. And then you just do the same thing to the opposite side. Just hand tighten it as far as you can. The same thing on the bottom. Make sure you get it, get it on straight. Hand tighten it as far as you can. The last thing you want to do is cross thread it. And we're just uh, tightening the, the other bolt, nice and snug. That should be good right there. Now, usually with your uh, with your drain, there will be a little covering that you just need to peel off. You can go ahead and take the stopper out. And then you're going to unscrew this top and then you're going to get some plumber's putty. I always like to use the plumber's putty just to give it a, a nice fit so you don't have any leaks. So you just go ahead and roll out your plumber's putty and you want to be generous on this. Make sure you have plenty to wrap around the drain. Just take it and form it around the drain. And then you just, you go ahead and set the, uh, the rim. And then you're going to screw the, this into the rim, this part right here. So, We'll go ahead and do that and then I can just go ahead and put this through and then go ahead and start screwing it on. You want to get it nice and snug but tighten it as much as you can. That's about as much as it's going to go and then you're going to tighten this bolt and you want to make sure that uh, your drain stopper entry is facing the back and then you just go ahead and hand, start hand tightening this bolt and then you'll will eventually have to use some pliers or uh, channel locks or a crescent wrench to tighten it. But you can see up top what it's doing is it's compressing the plumber's putty so it gets a nice snug fit. Now once we've hand tightened it we'll grab the channel locks and then just go ahead and continue tightening the bolt again you want to make sure that that entry to the drain stop is to the back you can see it's compressing this washer so that you will not have any leaks you just want to get it nice and snug you know, some of them will be metal and you run the risk of, if you tighten, tighten it too much, you run the risk of cracking the porcelain. Once you tighten it down, you want to remove all the plumber's putty. Just like that, that's good. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to fit this in through the back side so that it fits in here so that when you lift it, 
when you pull up on the handle, it's going to raise it up or lower it. So I can see, I can go in from the bottom and see where it's coming in. Now you do need to remove the nut, which is on there. This will, that'll be on there. And you may want to use some Teflon tape, but you'll look down and you can see where it's coming through. You can see down there, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but you can see it sticking through. And then you're going to put it so that it, that it goes through the hole. You put it up and down and you mold it, whether it's been secured or not. I, I already put it on, but you'll just go ahead and slip this on, slip the, the mold on, or the nut on, and then go ahead and hand tighten it. You're going to place the handle through the hole. And then you'll need to go underneath and you're going to um, slide this, slide that handle in through this hole. You'll tighten that up. Probably put it in the, this middle hole. So go ahead and take a look at this. Now one other thing is you've got to put this metal slip on. This will help keep this, uh, this on. So you'll put it in that middle hole and then you're going to slide this on and again that keeps it from falling off. The problem we may run into here is uh, well, we've got this hose but it, it looks like it'll be okay it won't be in the way. Then you got to run that handle down through the center. So again what you're going to do is you'll run this through the center and then you're going to tighten this nut right here. Do it, tighten as much as you can. Uh, hand tighten it as much as you can. And you're going the right way that you're tightening it, not loosening it. And once it starts to get snug, you'll have to use the pliers to finish tightening it. And then you'll get the pliers. and tighten this nut up. You need to get it nice and snug, otherwise it'll just, the rod will pull through. You make sure you're going the right way to tighten it. It's kind of hard because you've got all these holes in the way. You then want to just make sure that it feels like it's getting nice and snug so that it will drain and also it will seal and it looks like we've done a pretty good job. The next thing that we need to do is reinstall the P-trap. When you do that you want to make sure that you put the uh, put the wing nut on and then the compression the compression washer and then you're going to slide that up on. Make sure you're getting a good seal with this compression washer and then just go ahead and hand tighten it. And then the same thing here. You've got that, that compression washer on and just make sure that you're not cross threading. It should go on nice and easy. Then just tighten it up. It's nice and snug. And this is one and a quarter. You may have one and a half. Sometimes you can get a compression nut to uh, secure that. All right, it looks like we're all finished. We'll go ahead and turn the water on. You'll, you'll turn the water on and then just check for leaks. Okay, before you, if you turn your main water line on, you'll want to open up some faucets so you don't have all that pressure going to, uh, going to your different uh, sinks and toilets and everything. So go ahead and uh, open up your water so you don't have all that pressure getting all at once. So you can see we've got water. Now let's check the drain and make let's check, check the drain stop and see if that's filling up. It looks like we're good to go there. And we'll go ahead and release the water. Now we're just going to check underneath. You want to check around the P-trap, make sure there's no water coming through up around the drain. Check each one of the uh, water lines down below 
and up top and make sure there's no water leaking and it looks like a miracle has occurred we do not have any water leaks so there you have it how to install a sink and a faucet 